three, two, one. Here we go! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this Friday episode of We Talk. I'm Yolanda Nell, and I will be your host for today. Stick around for today's interview as we are talking to Jet Blast owners about the Dopsicle and Popsicle range. And now for some news highlights. The aftermath of the biggest exam fraud in Namibia's history costs the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture about 14 million Namibian dollars to rectify. At the end of last year, examination papers in various subjects intended for grade 11s and 12s were leaked and the examinations were consequently postponed until this year. The ministry's executive director, Sanet Steenkamp, said the ministry will spend about 14.1 million Namibian dollars on rewriting the exams for both the senior secondary certificate ordinary level and grade 12. The nationwide transport of the papers for 10 subjects printed for grade 11 and distributed to all 14 regions cost the ministry 8 million Namibian dollars, while reprinting of the papers for 5 subjects for grade 12 cost 2.5 million Namibian dollars. The total transport cost of the papers from the UK to Namibia was 3.6 million Namibian dollars. According to Steenkamp, the ministry has never had to deal with such a big dilemma and shame. This includes academic theft and other corrupt practices such as selling papers. According to her, the national examinations are a comprehensive process that involves various phases and that includes various experts or role players at both local and international level. She stressed that the ministry reckons the security measures that have been put in place since then are being applied carefully. They immediately took steps to deal with the issue. Despite the financial implications, they are satisfied that the necessary steps will be taken to hold the alleged culprits accountable. The rewriting of subjects for grade 11 started on Monday and will last until the 21st of January. The grade 12 subjects will take place from 7 to 15 February. If you thought 2020, the year that COVID-19 hit the world, was bad, 2021 was much worse, says Gita Pitzold, chief executive of the Hospitality Association of Namibia. She said that efforts to revive tourism and restore it to its full glory last year met with sustained blows when the devastating third wave of the pandemic hit the country in mid-2021. This was followed by global travel restrictions in southern Africa due to the appearance of Omicron late last year, just when a silver lining finally began to appear and the tourism industry began to rise its head again. Large-scale cancellations due to the travel ban, the constant review of and also the introduction of stricter travel restrictions have led to worldwide reluctance to plan and undertake long-distance travel because ad hoc decisions by governments are constantly changing the rules and regulations. Travel restrictions and quarantine have resulted in prospective travelers losing their confidence in long-term planning. Because Namibia is a long-distance destination with the majority of its income from tourism coming from the international market, Gita admits that the setbacks have caused a huge blow to the industry. While perseverance and persistence was our slogan for 2020, the repeated setbacks and cancellation for late last year may have dealt the final blow for the survival of a number of tourism businesses. The early prognosis by some critics that COVID-19 will negatively affect international travel and that tourism will only return to the old normal levels in 2024 or 2025 now seems to be a reality. 
Despite the reluctance to embark on international travel, Namibia's largest source markets, and especially those in the European Union, still show great interest in what the country says it offers. Pristine open spaces, sparsely populated areas, a relatively strong and healthy infrastructure in terms of road, communication and health. These factors still make a country a very popular tourist destination. Namibia is one of six pilot countries taking part in a project to strengthen science, technology and innovation systems for sustainable development in Africa. The project first launched in Tanzania in July last year, with Namibia, Congo, Ghana, Sierra Leone and Zimbabwe to follow. The project launched at a multi-stakeholder consultation meeting, attended by about 50 participants representing ministries and policy-making bodies, research and ethic regulatory bodies, the private sector and local communities. The project, funded by the Swedish International Development Agency, supports the countries in its efforts to strengthen its national innovation systems in line with the recommendation on science and scientific researchers, a landmark international accord adopted by UNESCO's 195 member states in November 2017. Namibia revised the national STI policy for 2020 to 2030. According to the Minister of Higher Education, Technology and Innovation, the government recognizes that STIs are key to economic growth and sustainable development. She stated that any successful economy, particularly in today's quest for knowledge-based economies, national STI capacity and a functioning NSI are basic prerequisites. For Namibia, STI is a strategic imperative for national development and for the attainment of the national development aspirations. According to UNESCO, to support poverty reduction and achieve the sustainable development goals, STI systems in Africa need to be strengthened. Building up and invigorating Africa's scientific systems, encouraging research, creating opportunity to nurture and support research output, slow down brain drain, address gender inequalities and accelerate towards knowledge-based society are critical elements for Africa's future. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This morning we're speaking to Jet Blast. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Yana. Yeah, thanks for having us. Quickly tell us, how did Jet Blast start? Shall I go? Yeah, okay, good question. So, <laughs> so obviously with the, with the closure of, of Enamabia, we, we had a look at a few options. And um, so this was an old idea that we had as a family going, you know, to, to have some products like this going. And then it died a slow death and I revived it again about the middle of this year and I contacted Darren who was with the interest and he was actually on his way to Capri. So I had some little notes on a, <laughs> on a, on a, on a notepad and, and gave the idea to him and then we took it off from there. So this business started in the beginning, in the middle of 2021? Correct. Okay. Yeah, the, the first idea, yes. Okay, cool. And then what products are available? Okay, well at this stage we've got um, an adult range and a kids range as we call it. It's not really a kids range, it's just not a non-alcoholic range. Um, so the alcohol ranges, we've got um, flavors like Tequila Sunrise, Gin Tonic, um, Strawberry Daiquiri and Ritter Cream, it's our only cream based one, or milk based one. Um, and then it's a Strawberry Daiquiri is the, is the fifth one in that range. Um, it's basically all natural ingredients like you'd find in any cocktail. We add a couple of things to that to help alcohol freeze and also just bring out the right texture for the, for the lobby then. Um, and then on the uh, non-alcoholic range, the popsicle range, and um, we've got at this stage we've got mango, um, we've got passion fruit, strawberry and then a mango and orange mix. Um, and they all contain a little fruit at this stage also. Wow, is, that's fantastic. Yeah. 
Why did you decide to bring about a product like this for Namibians? Well, uh, we are well, we got excited about the idea. It's an old concept of obstacles, it's nothing new. But you know, we wanted to give it a new twist, um, which we think we achieved, and also to be the first Namibian company to do it commercially um, and not rely on South African imported products. So I think it's a great way for us to show that it's possible for us Namibians to, to be out and do the things ourselves. Where can clients get your products? Okay, well at this stage we obviously based in Vintuk, so our biggest stock supply is in Vintuk. Um, you can contact us on our WhatsApp number, order like that, we can deliver um, to central pickup point and then you can collect in your convenience there. Um, otherwise, we also have a pickup point in Swapo at this stage. Same thing, you order with us and then uh, we give you a pickup point for, for collection. That's great. Now, what is your plans for the year 2022? Good question. So, um, so we, we kick off with quite on a high note, which we're very grateful for. Lots of support from the Namibians. So we saw that there's a, quite a need for us to be more areas in Namibia. So we'd love to expand more um, to be able to deliver to more towns in, in Namibia. And hopefully have our first employees very soon as well. Wow, that's fantastic. And that's big growth possibilities for a company that's still very, very young. Yes, yes, very much so. But it's obviously important for us to, to take one step at a time. Um, but, but we're quite excited about the future. And, and like I said, very thankful for the support we have from the Namibian population here. What is a favorite among the clients so far? I'll give that one to you. Yeah, it's difficult. You know, we, we always think we have our finger on it. It's a certain flavor and then the next day it's, it's something different. But um, I think in the alcohol range is probably gin and tonic at this day. Yeah. And kids range is probably the strawberry popsicles yeah. that go down well. For sure. Um, but like I said, the next day will just prove us wrong. So it's difficult to put your finger to that too much. I will be honest, I had all of them over the December holidays. <laughs> me and my family had quite some fun. And the gin and tonic for me is yeah, a personal favorite as well. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with everything you have planned for the new year. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Today's life hack is for the men out there. Growing a beard is actually beneficial for your health. It protects the skin from the sun, prevents allergies and asthma attacks, and it slows down the aging process. Next up, Jeanette Dierhardt for your Flex Minute. Hi everybody and welcome back to Flex. I'm Jeanette Dierghart, your presenter for Flex and today we will be focusing on stretches that will help you with your lower back pain. Okay, so we're going to do a yoga movement 
it's, it's such a long name. It's Supta Parangustana. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. But basically, you have your legs stretch out and you try and reach your hands or reach for your toes, both arms. So you'll ask me, okay, how does this work? Why will it help me with lower back pain? So your inner thighs and your hamstrings, if they're too tight, they can also lead to back problems. So you really want to stretch it out. But while you're doing this, try and keep your lower back pressed against the floor. So don't lift it up to reach your toe, but rather have it there. And if you can't reach for your toe, and if you're not that flexible, just have it to the point where, you know, where you can reach, even if you just reach for your knees or for your ankle, but try and reach as far as you can go. Okay, now, this one is one of my favorites. It's called a supine twist. So I think it also has, a, it's probably come from the, from the spine. So you have your legs stretched out in front of you, or stretched out, to the sides in a T position and then you are gonna just twist both knees, bend knees, twist it to the one side. Okay, so this one will work directly on that lower back muscle. So you have it there and it stretches into your glute and we go to the other side again. So stretch as far as you can go. So you can really get a nice twist in this and feel the movement properly. And that brings us to the end of this one. I will see you guys next time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all that I have for you for this week. I do, however, will end off with our blue carrel from last year, because let's just face it, we're not perfect and we do make mistakes, although we have a lot of fun. Enjoy this clip and I'll see you again on Monday. Three, two, one. Here we go. And now for did you know, I'm wrapping up housing talk with Zandra Fenta, but for first, but for first. <laughs> Good morning viewers and welcome to another edition of We Talk. I'm Yolanda Nell. And I'm Jereen Hoff and we are at the Cork and Fork. But before we get into that, today is wall safety and... Oh, I think what we're <laughs> The Ministry of Finance has allotted 79 million to the operationalization of the. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that piece of information, and that's all we have for this week. Yes, please tune in again next week when we are hip and happening and running on for Monday already again. Have a safe weekend and keep yourself protected. Goodbye. Stop it, keep yourself protected. <laughs> Yolanda, who did you chat to in your like <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> God, bra oh. <laughs> Is it me? <laughs> and now for did you know I talked to that uh, ah. <laughs> To Gabby Gay. One. And now for our last segment, did you know I speak to Gabby? Gabby. <laughs> <laughs>